Hi and welcome to lesson number three of this four part mini course that I'm doing on some simple groove concepts for the dominant seven chord. In lesson one we looked at the major pentatonic scale, in lesson number two we looked at the minor pentatonic scale and now for this lesson we're going to be looking at some approach to chord tone techniques. You know nothing spells out the harmony better than the chord tones so to really have an understanding of how to use them in different ways other than playing them is going to be really useful for you especially in your fill solos and indeed bass lines. So we're going to get into that stuff and after a couple of patterns of that we're going to get into the blues scale. I'm going to introduce to some licks and ideas just using the blues scale and combining it with everything else that we've learned so far. And then in the final lesson we're going to kind of get into more kind of groove solo concepts. Alright, so let's get straight into the, this lesson. So the first thing we're going to have to know is the chord tones for a C7 chord. And we can build this off the third fret of the A string. So the fingering pattern for the C7 chord is 2, A string, then D string 1, 4, and then G string 2nd finger. So it's 2, 1, 4, 2. Okay, you can also build that off your 4th finger as well. So if you go over to the 8th fret, E string 4, A string 3, D string 1, D string 4. Okay, let's hear that against the chord. C7, the chord tones, C, E, G and B flat. Okay, so our first approach pattern is a double chromatic from below. So if I'm going to start with a C, 3rd fret, I'm going to start my approach from this B flat here on the 1st fret. Okay, and then I can approach the E in the same way from the G, G sharp, to D, D sharp, to the E, and then again from the G and go 2 um, frets down, or a whole step down, F, F sharp, G. know. I don't really approach the B flat that way because we're not starting from a, a scale degree, we're kind of starting from this A flat. So it doesn't really work. So generally when I go to the B flat I just approach it from chromatic below. Okay let's look at a, a couple of concepts that you can do with that. I'm just going to play along with a drum groove and just see what I come up with that concept. So it's the double chromatic from below or a whole step below the chord tone. And you can do this for the root, the third and the five. <laughs> Okay, so there's a lot of cool stuff in there in that double chromatic from below. It works well up to the root, up to the third, and up to the fifth. It's really good for fills and some kind of um, melodic concept. It's also really good for, for kind of solid bass lines. It really spells out the harmony and is kind of introducing notes that are not within any particular scale, you know, them chromatic belows. And that just really shows you the strength of what a target note can do. You know, it's all about where you're taking the line. So really you can pretty much start anywhere as long as the direction is really well mapped out to, to, to the chord tones. Okay, so what we're going to do now, and also, you know, I'm going to remind you, if you haven't seen lesson number one and lesson number two, please go back and check them out because we, we talk about the strong beat, weak beat concept as well of where you can do these placements and it's all in the documents for you to download. This lesson obviously has a document as well and some tracks to download. You can do that by clicking on the link that's on the screen 
and also in the description area below the uh, video. Okay, so the, this next approach to core tone concept is going to use some knowledge of the Mixolydian mode. Now the Mixolydian mode is the fifth mode of the major modes. If you're not sure about all of that stuff, there's plenty of material in the academy about all of that. I'll just quickly show you a fingering pattern. If you already know this stuff, just hang tight because we're going to show you a cool approach that you can do to these chord tones. I just want to kind of explain where that's coming from first. So I'm going to play you the C7 chord and I'm just going to play you the scale and then I'm going to show you a fingering pattern and then I'm just going to let it go and, and you can dig deeper if you want. So it starts on the third fret of the A string, fingering pattern 2-4. D string 1, 2, 4, G string 1, 2, 4. And the scale degrees are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, flat 7, and then root. So it has a combination of the major and minor pentatonic in the sense that we have this 6 and then the flat 7. Okay, so now we'll get into the approach pattern because that's where the, the cool stuff is here. And basically what we're doing is we're going from a scale degree above and a chromatic below. So I'm approaching every chord tone this way and I'm using the Mixolydian scale, the C Mixolydian scale, as my reference of where I can draw these diatonic approaches from. So if it's a scale above from a C, it's going to be a D, then chromatic below B to the C. Now to the E would be F, D sharp, E. Now to the G would be A, F sharp, G. And then to the B flat would be a C, A, B flat. Okay, this is, you're going to use this stuff more in fills, but I, I really want to put it out there because I hear it all the time in licks on blues and all kinds of stuff, especially the approach to the third degree. You must have heard that before. So if I play that against a dominant 7 chord. But like I said, you know, study all of those approaches, you know, I have lots of courses on this material too on these approach patterns that we use for more kind of solos and a jazz um, vocabulary or, or genre but in this sense I just wanted to point out that pattern to you so you can kind of get a hold of that approach to the third and kind of understand theoretically where it's coming from so it's F D sharp E and the target is the E okay and we can use that in our licks in our major pentatonic minor pentatonic Whatever you're doing, we can kind of incorporate something like that in there. Okay, so I'm just going to jam along with the drum track again, and I'm just going to keep that, my, that concept in mind, and I'm just going to see what comes out naturally. <laughs> Okay, so you can hear that that really lends itself more to a solo concept, but you can hear that it really outlines the, the dominant 7 chord really well. It's kind of a simple concept, you know, just learn it all over the instrument. Like I said, I have very specific courses on these, these approach patterns, but I just wanted to throw it out there because it is an, a legitimate option to use if you just put some character on the notes. Can be a really effective kind of melodic little statement. Okay so we're now going to move on to the final part of this lesson which is the blue scale. Now the blue scale is an amazing scale, it's great over a dominant 7 chord, it's great over a blues. If you haven't wrapped your head around this yet I really recommend that you do so kind of right now because it's got a lot of goodies in there. 
All right, it's kind of an extension of the minor pentatonic, but the reason why I'm introducing it at this stage of the lesson is because it also kind of lends itself to those approach patterns as well that I'm talking about, because it's the strength of the line that kind of gives you the gold, you know what I mean? If you know where you're going, you can kind of map out different interesting ways of getting there. So let's have a look at the fingering pattern for the blues scale. We're going to start on the third fret of the A string and in position one, four, D string, one, two, three, and there's our new note there, that F sharp, it's kind of a degree in between the four and five if you want to think of the minor pentatonic scale. So from the top, third fret A string, one, four, D string, one, two, three, and then G string, one, four, one, three. Okay, you must have heard that before. So here's it against the dominant seven chord. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm, like I was saying about the, the strength of the approach note, you know, when you think about it, all it sounds normal and cool, and then you get to this fourth degree, and I'm not really hearing that F sharp as a functional part of the scale, I'm just kind of hearing it as a passing tone, you know, it's like approaching something, and it's got that, like, gives you that kind of bluesy sound, because it's not kind of related to any particular scale, you know, it's, um, known as a blue note, just like this E flat as the, the flat and third is as well. And this is where you can kind of add some cool. Some cool stuff there, you know, just kind of work off that sharp four or the, the F sharp. And then work off the, the flat and third too. Okay, so I'm now just going to jam along with the groove again using the blues scale and we'll see what we can come up with. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in lesson number four. Remember to download your documents and play along tracks. And in lesson number four, we're going to get into more of these solo ideas and how to tackle and how to deal with that scary moment when everything stops but the drummer and you're just kind of left to um, take a solo. So we're going to kind of combine all of the knowledge that we've looked at so far and then get stuck in to that. So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in lesson four.